folks, welcome to episode 129. So many things to talk about, especially because I missed a week because I got stuck in a nor'easter. And in normally March. in New York in March, I just I I'm ready for spring. I'm tired of it. And normally I never complain about Delta, but they did the carrot thing all night long. You're leaving. You're leaving. You're leaving. And then boom, canceled it. No, they could have just, you know, we probably weren't going anyway. I figured that, but, um, anywho, that's why. And then that rolled into more craziness and travel and all that, but that's really no fun to relive, is it? No, no. it's not. Let's talk about something fun. Well, where was I before that? Red Bank? Fun. Super fun. Yeah, that gig is always great. And the opener, um, that, that was Michael Somerville and his dad came and I, his dad and his brother and he was backstage kind of nervous. And I was like, I'm so glad this isn't me. It's those it's those kind of nights you really appreciate. Yeah. I don't know anybody here tonight. So whatever happens out there, oh, well. But, yeah, like even my mom and dad, when they come, it's fine. But I'm aware they're there. Right. You're conscious of it. Like it just, you can't be a total free-range chicken, as I call it. You need There's always that hitch there. But um, he did great. And then Huntington, New York, the Paramount, the these Irish guys that own that place are so fun yeah. and nice. They're if they're acting, they should get Academy Awards because they jump <laughs> out of their chair to give me a hug and say hi. And they made it through COVID. They backpaid all their employees. That's nice. It was wonderful. So it's all the same employees. Nobody's left. You feel like you're going back to a club club, like back in the day where you kept going to the same clubs. But um, it feels like a little home. Yeah, they always have hockey on, and the green room's really nice, and the their guys are back there watching hockey, albeit I have to watch the Rangers or the <laughs> Islanders. The yeah. Islanders, I think they were watching because we're all on Long Island. Um, but that is just such a they're – they're so fun, and that is such a great venue. Okay. Yeah, they have a speakeasy downstairs, and, oh. and it's authentic. It is awesome. Um, yeah, I think – don't know if normal – I think you have to be a member of that, though, yeah, yeah to yeah. go down there. But if you live on Long Island, to go see anything at the Paramount yeah. would be great. It's like a giant hard rock yeah, or House of Blues or something. There's a bar in the back. Anyway, it's happy. super fun. Um, but let's start before I get into Memphis. Um, there's so many things on my desk because everything went so crazy. Um, but this made me laugh. I, I, I know he's serious. This guy said this thing. His name's William. Dear Miss Madigan, I'm one of your Murfreesboro's uh, Tennessee tournaments, which is not too far down the road from where I live. Uh, I was listening to your most recent episode. I could give you more information on the drag ban. Oh, no. It started last year at Murfreesboro Pride Fest. Some gentle drag queens made simulated sex movements, uh, parentheses thrusting, during part of a show, and now we have this. Sigh. <laughs> Love and respect. But this is how this is how I would roll with a news story. I don't know. I heard... It's a, I don't know. I heard somebody at the Pride Parade took Perfect it too far, <laughs> and then here we are. I'm sure there's more to it, but, but that just I just like sigh. Here we are. Um, so what am I drinking? Well, let's just start with what came backstage. Red Bank to Sandrina. Yeah, so much stuff. The red the Red Bank and the Huntington guys were like, "Is this normal?" Because they just kept bringing stuff back. I'm like, "Yes." And what I can't take home, you will you will get. So be happy that you're bringing this stuff back. Little dog uh, beer was delicious. Me and Michael, because Michael is a beer monster. Yeah, yeah he's a super monster. <laughs> Uh, so, Janine and Beth brought me 100 percent goldfish. Yes, the goldfish never disappoint. And when I got stuck at LaGuardia. Guess what came out when I was in the Delta Club? Goldfish. Yeah, I'm so I love the Delta Clubs, but you get tired of the food, and I'm like, you know, whoa, I have goldfish. What? Snacks. Long Long Ireland Beer Company that came um, from Maryland, very nice. Soon to be uh, Kennesaw, Georgia. Oh, oh, she's moving. Huh? She likes the story times in the podcast. Long, it's called Long Ireland Brewing Company, Celtic oh. Ale, which was great for St. Patrick's Day. Yep. Yeah, Fun. which, um, and then these, <laughs> this thing, this, this, this is the Dolly Funko. So I bought stock in Funko when I really wasn't sure what it is. Stop. I didn't, I don't Why? know. It was during COVID. I was bored. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe I'll go buy some stock or something. That's fun. And then this looks fun. And here's the Dolly Parton one. It's number 269. It's adorable. I'm a little jealous of that 
Yep, and it says on the back, if you don't like the road you're walking on, start paving another one. Oh. Well, there you go. That's all the, um, Janine brought that with the fire shirt, the uh, fire department in New York City. Very cool. And tons of beers and golf balls. Yes, I'll always take golf balls. Never disappoint. And they were the good ones. Oh. The ones I like. Yeah. Yeah. The Taylor Maids. Nice. Yeah. Carolyn brought a copy of her brother's book, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to. Um, she first became a termite after hearing the bit about your brother ever became Pope. Oh, that's an old one. No, Pope Hilarious. Pope Hilarious. Pope Asaurus. I know, I don't know. You're right thinking of Trump Asaurus. <laughs> um, yeah, more Whoa. beer, more beer. I forgot this one. Raps Baron. Baron? That's Memphis. Allison and Anthony. Oh, okay, that's Memphis. Yeah, a lot came back. That was the blue beer. Rosie and Megan. This is so funny. They made a t shirt that says, um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and a termite one, and they want to know why there aren't termite t shirts. And I thought, you know what? They're right. I should just make one that says termites, I or guess. I don't know. You guys tell me. What do you want it to say on there? Yeah. Termites? Just termites? Speaking of t-shirts. Speaking of t-shirts, the new t-shirts are on the website. Go get them. Yeah. The new website. The new website. Yeah. It's so so much better. I got so sick of looking at that other one. You've been uh, busy. I've been very busy. <laughs> for me. Yeah. I don't like to be that busy. No. I'm not a workaholic. Mm -hmm. When people are like, oh, I, I'll never forget the Joan Rivers documentary, and I love Joan Rivers. I still can think of like 20 jokes of hers. Oh, and I did her daughter's podcast, Melissa. She's very funny. Not on purpose funny. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she's just a funny person and smart. Um, but <laughs> Joan, that doc there was a documentary about her life that was great. And she opened up her calendar and it was blank. And she started to panic and got like, kind of like, come on, let's go. What the Whoa. hell? And I thought, oh my God, her nightmare is my dream. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, there is something wrong with me. Uh, there is something very wrong so with me. And then Sarah and Jackie from Tulsa brought all kinds of stuff. These uh, TCU, which are the horn frogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would want to go to school there just so I could say I'm a horn frog. <laughs> I think it's funny. I There's so that. many mascots that are boring. You know, oh, we're yeah. the bears. Oh, we're the tigers. Mm -hmm. Which Missouri, we're the tigers. Right. It's yeah. just not, you know, uh, they brought so much stuff. Beer, I got. But they brought this jerky, which I'm going to be trying from Oklahoma. No man's land beef jerky, to tell you the truth. I've already eaten some, and it's really good. Yeah, it's hard, but it's worth it. Even if I ripped off a crown, it's worth it. See, that should be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good advertising. It's great advertising, and I'm drinking <laughs> one of the beers I think they brought. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beer. It actually says how to noodle, if you know my joke about noodling. Dunda has a picture of a hillbilly going in a lake and grabbing a catfish. <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma's weird. It's a hoppy farmhouse <laughs> ale. Oklahoma doesn't have a ton to do, so they have to get creative. Right. That's what's going on in Oklahoma. Totally. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of fun in Oklahoma, but you have to figure out how to do it. It's not right in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> it is not right in front of your face. True. You make your plans accordingly. All right. Well, Memphis, oh, my God. That's why I have this Elvis. They give this to me. Elvis whiskey. You probably won't drink it. I haven't opened it yet. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, and there's just so many things about Memphis. They need a PR person, and I'd be willing to do it for free. I love it there. And nobody ever thinks about, hey, let's go to Memphis for the weekend. Yeah. Beale Street, it, every bar in there has a band that's like a Prince Funk band or, they're either, or, or blues. They're like a B.B. King type band. It's like... Nashville, except Beale Street, is more funk and blues, and Nashville is more country American. Um, Beale Street is just fascinating. Silky O'Sullivan's the bar downtown. It's on Beale Street. I went. They got the um, the the goats were out on the nice. in the uh, out in the patio, and it was cold. And I thought, ooh, they have a nice house for the goats. I thought they would go. No, nope, they were out in the sun, going up and down. I put Instagram pictures up. The Civil Rights Museum. They took the old Lorraine Motel where Martin Luther King got shot. On the second floor of the motel, they turned that into the Civil Rights Museum, but they kept the sign. Oh, cool. It's so cool. And then you have Graceland, too. And even if you don't care about Elvis, his clothing, his, the car museum, I don't even care about cars. I yeah. care about Elvis, but I don't care about cars. You, it's amazing. You could spend all day there. Yeah. It's just, there's just, there, there's golf in Memphis, the food, Central Barbecue. 
which is my, I know there's a, t it's like fighting in Kansas city about which is the best barbecue. I just happen to like central their vinegar barbecue sauce. I like their regular too, but the vinegar, I don't really need to taste this. I'm just <laughs> hungry. You drank. <laughs> <laughs> I've drank it. Uh -huh. I'm so good. Um, it's just a fun weekend. Yes. And I feel like. And inexpensive. Nothing yeah, expensive. not expensive. No. I feel like, and they, they have the um, the basketball team now, if you want to see an the NBA Grizzlies. game. The yeah, the Grizzlies. And they have that guy, Ja Morant. Like, mm -hmm. he's, he's awesome. Yeah. You can stay. There's a Weston right there on Beale Street. Boom, go see an NBA game if that's your thing. It's just underrated. Yeah. I don't know why people don't. I don't know. I bring it up to my Midwest friends. Why don't you go to Memphis for the weekend? They're like, uh huh. That's it. I'm like, what? Okay. What do I need to pitch you on the Peabody Hotel? There's ducks that come out of the elevator in the morning, Why? and they're <laughs> escorted back at night, and they're taken to the penthouse where they live. They have a duck master, and he's got like a. <laughs> no. I go every time I'm there to watch it. I'm, I'm one of those people that, and then they waddle out of the elevator, and then they go to the penthouse, and then the the ones that are up in the penthouse get switched out every. I think two days for four new ducks so that they don't, they don't want them too citified. They want yeah. them to know their natural habitat so that you're not going to see the same ducks every time either. Oh. They're different ducks. They nice. switch out. Cool. Yeah. I mean, the history, just the Peabody Hotel, it's just amazing. Oh. So, and Graceland, ah, that's the third time I've been. I went once with my mom and her sisters, all my, all my aunts. We had a blast. We made a whole weekend out of it because um, they all, like my mom, was one of those teenagers screaming at the top of her lungs for Elvis. Like, yeah. I don't even remember him, really. He was right. died when I was nine. Right. I knew they liked him. Right. They went to Vegas to go see him. I, I was probably, it was like the year he died. They may have seen the last, I got to ask them that. Um, but they came home and I said, uh, wow, how was Elvis, you know? Two diabolically different reviews. My my dad goes, he's an overweight drug addict who doesn't know the words to any of his songs, and all he does is throw out scarves. My mom, it was the most wonderful show I've ever seen in my life. I just, Kathleen, I can't get over that he was right there. I can't believe your dad managed to get tickets. Like, they never went to anything like that, and it was in Vegas. Like, they flew to Vegas for it. Like, That's cool. Yeah. Um, but the people at Graceland, the that's another thing, like, he, you should just go. Trust me on this. They have you go. There's vans across the street, yep. and and the, I performed at the sound stage, which is on the other side, not where the mansion is. You get your ticket. They van you up there. You get to go to the house. Lisa Marie's grave is already there. Oh wow! Yeah, it kind of has. It has a sad vibe. It just happened. Well, and then yeah. her son is there too, yeah. and it's weird. There's no dates on the tombs, and she said she didn't want that. I've never seen a grave uh, marker, yeah. what, a, what a, a, headstone, a headstone, but it's not really a headstone. It's like a tomb above ground. Yeah. I've never seen one without dates. Interesting. I don't know why she did that, but something to think about, I guess. Um, it it's awesome to see it all, yeah. but it's it needs something. Maybe those fourteen year old twins of hers can. But the, uh, why are they going to want to go? Their mom's buried there, and their brother. Yeah. It's going to take another generation. Yeah. Like. It need, you know what gave it a happy vibe? They had three horses in the back. Oh, that's fine. He bought 13 acres for $100,000 way back then, whenever it is. It's still 13 acres, but back then it was the country side. Like, there were no homes. There was nothing. He told his mom and dad, go find a place. It was right before he had to go in the Army. And they found Graceland. That was already its name, so they kept it. The house is not what you would think for Elvis. You would think way bigger, mm -hmm. way grand, more grandiose. But he loved it, and... Um, the grounds are great. The horses are happy. That makes it feel like it's alive. That's nice. Yeah. And then across the street is his outfit museum. I put a video on Instagram. It's, it's amazing. Like you just walk in and go, oh my God. Like even Liberace <laughs> would stay for a while and right. go, well, who did that one? Right. Oh my God. Who bedazzled that? Like you can't believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's very Liberace at times. And then the car museum, it just. And then it, there, his award thing, mm -hmm. and then they have a whole museum about him in the military. Mm -hmm. But, like, he went when we were, weren't even at war. So, really, uh, it's not like you were in the Army. It's like, here's a chance for me to be super hot in outfits. He yeah, and he was outfits. very hot yeah. in his outfits. <laughs> well done, <laughs> he's Elvis. Like, he's like Army uh, <laughs> And shout out to everybody that worked there because they were so, so nice. 
and talk about it. Dee Dee, everybody, Lenny, everybody there was just, it was amazing. And then they brought this whiskey back there. Um, What's it called? It's called Elvis Whiskey. True, that's it. Straight <laughs> Tennessee whiskey. It couldn't be any more simple. No. I haven't opened it yet. Elvis was a man of many nicknames, including, including Tiger Man, the king of the jungle. Some say it was his dad who first called him Tiger Man. Some say it was a fan. Either way, the name was a perfect fit. He first performed the song Tiger Man in concert in Las Vegas in 1969 and continued to play it throughout the years, usually in a medley with Mystery Train, singing it over 150 times on stage. I like it. Yeah. Cool. It's sad when you're there because everybody dies so young. Yeah. He was 42. His mom was 46. Yeah. Lisa Vernon lived a while, but not that long, like 63. Yeah. The old, you know who lived the longest? Vernon, his dad's mom, his grandma, Minnie oh, May. Yeah. She lived in 90. Wow. Yeah. And apparently she was like Iron Fist, old Christian lady. <laughs> There's a picture of her, the thing, and she really does look like the lady from the Beverly Hillbillies. Um, <laughs> that skinny old, I forget yeah. what grandma's name was. But anyway, that's enough of my travel talk. Go, but go to Memphis. We're moving on. Go to Memphis. Yeah, um, jungle room oh, and in New York, I did um, American bra- uh, Game Breakers. It's called Game Breakers on Amazon, if you want to track that down, on Amazon Prime. It's a sports show. Yeah. yeah. The kid, they were both great. It's two guys. Yep. They were great. They know so much. It was amazing. Um, and I like to talk about sports for no reason. So, um, What's the jungle room like? Is it the cool? jungle room. This is a famous room. So what's uh, Grayson, um, well, here's what you can see in the house. Okay. You can only see the bottom floor. Okay. And then there's a be- like a, a den basement type. Mm-hmm. You can't go upstairs. Okay. Nobody's allowed upstairs except Lisa Marie was allowed. And I guess her kids. That's the bedrooms, and everybody wants to see the bedroom where he died. Yeah, you know, we're not doing that. Right. I think that's cool. His aunt, one of his aunts, lived there till two thousand twenty-two or two thousand something. His aunt Delta, his dad's sister, uh-huh. she lived there. Wow. Yeah, so she'd be prowling around. This made me laugh too. He had short order cooks on call day and night, wow. eight of them. So if he he was a night owl mm-hmm. at two in the morning, if he wants bacon and eggs, yeah. somebody's like, okay, no problem. I mean, th- well, that's not going to help your waistline. No. 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 Maybe you need to make your own goddamn eggs and think about <laughs> it at 3 in the morning. Um, jumpsuits get bigger. <laughs> but it's, it's a very homey house, though. You felt like it was happy at one, one time. In the jungle room, he went to some furniture store in Memphis, mm-hmm. and the guy, it's the weirdest shit you've ever seen. Uh-huh. Um, and he bought it all. Wow. And I said, that man probably never got over that day, whoever owned that right. furniture store. Take it it went home to, from work and go, honey, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Elvis Presley came in and bought all my inventory. He bought the but, cheetah rug. Yeah, there's like the cheetah rug, and there's like monkey chairs. It's all <laughs> animalistic. I mean, I did. He, oh, he had a pet monkey, too. <laughs> he would dress it up in a tuxedo and put it in the driver's seat when people would come over. So they thought the monkey was... He was That's very funny. funny. That's Silly. Funny. Yeah. Like, the more stories they would tell you, you could see that it, it just always made him seem like it was a serious guy. He was redneck funny. I mean, he did things that me and Ron and Vic Henley would have done just to amuse. I wouldn't get a pet monkey and dress it up. That's probably mean to the <laughs> monkey, but um, back then nobody thought about that shit. He really did have a good sense of humor. But I can also see why Priscilla got sick of 50 guys hanging out in the house 24-7. He said he'd ride a tractor down to... Well, he was nice. He, so he built the little wall because mm-hmm. he didn't want fans just running right on up there. Jerry Lee Lewis apparently one time took his car. He said he was coming over, and they said, not now, Jerry. So he just drove over and plowed through the gates with his car nice. and pulled up front. <laughs> I mean, he was a crazy person. <laughs> Even the one lady said, well, Elvis liked Jerry Lee, but you don't want Jerry Lee all the time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I get it. Um, what did you ask me? There was something about, um, oh, well, when he would see fans, he would either go down on a tractor and his tractor is in the car museum, and it's not a tiny tractor. It's a big-ass John Deere. Or he would go on a horse oh. and down and sign all their autographs till they left. Wow. That's crazy. Can you imagine seeing Elvis riding a horse? Well, no, it would be like a, a god of yeah. some sort. Just this, I mean, not when he got super chubby, but, you know, when he was super hot. That, to be a, on a horse. Almost as cool as Marco and Baker. On a horse. <laughs> What's crazy, too, is, so the day he died, I was asking the lady, I thought he died at night. He died at, like, 1.30 in the afternoon. I didn't know that. He was going to leave that night, 
to start a tour and you can find, I wanted to see, I wonder what the tour, where was he going? Well, it's online. It was all American cities. Like he was starting in Portland, Maine and then boom, 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 boom. And it made it's all the way down the East coast back to Memphis. Yep. Well, he couldn't, uh, the night before he had a toothache. Mm-hmm. So at 1230 at night, he went to the dentist. He has a dentist on call. The dentist was also giving him way too many of everything. Right. Here's some back of them, whatever they gave out back then. The last known picture of Elvis is him driving through his own gates, driving his own car. Mm-hmm. He's got on a blue shirt, black jacket. It's the funky 70s glasses. But there were fans. It, the, one of the ladies that worked there told me they had a network. And they would tell people when he, because I'm like, what fans were randomly standing outside the man's home at, at 1230? Morning, yeah, when yeah. he got back at 2 in the morning. Well, they knew he was coming back. I guess they followed him. I mean, what kind of uh-huh. life is that? But anyway, he um, he tried to fall asleep. He couldn't fall asleep. At 4 o'clock, he took some sleeping pills. Still, nothing happened. Then t- 7 o'clock, he could never fall asleep. So now we're in this position where you've taken way too many. And then he tells his girlfriend at the time, Ginger somebody, I'm going to go in the bathroom and read. He loved to read. All of his books are there. Who knew he read that much? It was am- yeah, amazing. Um, and he had a heart attack in the bathroom oh. at one thirty in the afternoon. So he, he never, apparently he didn't even fall asleep till he never fell asleep. Right. Well, you can only take so much stuff. I think till you finally, your heart just is like, nay, nay. But his mom had a bad heart and she didn't even, right. she was no drinky, no druggy, no smoky, nothing. And she died young. Maybe they just had weak hearts. I, like I said that out of a drink of my jungle room pint glass from Grayson. Oh, anyway. Cool. All right. Awesome. Update. <laughs> um, <sighs> I think Elon uh, and uh, uh, Mark Fuckerberg are always going to be part of my updates now because they just won't stop. No. Facebook parent. Meta company plans to lay off another 10,000 people. Oh, my God. When is someone going to tell him, <laughs> nobody cares about your stupid goggles? No. Go get some friends. <laughs> <laughs> so much cheaper. <laughs> Facebook, they plan to 10,000 workers, marking the second round of significant job cuts. I mean, I'm very sorry that these people are losing their jobs. It's 10,000 people that are probably super sad. But this all started because he doesn't understand people. He's a crazy person. Yeah. They're eliminating uh, 13% of its workforce. You stole one good idea. Stick with it. Right. Um, the job is going to take over the, take place over the next mo- couple months. They're going to reduce the team size by around 10,000 and to close around 5,000 additional open roles that we haven't yet hired. Yeah. yeah. It's just, t- it's terrible. Like, I don't know when the stocks are down. Um, he says the world economy changed, competitive pressures grew, and our growth so, slowed considerably. No, nobody wants your dumb goggles. No. And the people that do want your dumb goggles can get them way cheaper, like my nephew Kevin. Somebody else already can do that too. Right. And they work. Um, Kevin's are fine. I mean, I don't know what Zuckerberg's are like, but they can't be that much better. No. I mean, Kevin's put, he put me on a roller coaster and almost vomited. I had it yeah, go off my head. It was that realistic. I'm like, oh my God. No, no, no. Um, so that's what Zuckerberg's up to. Meanwhile, Elon, whenever anybody says about a job, do you want to be part of our family? All I hear is cult. Right. Nope, no. nope, nope. I don't want to be any part of any family other than my own because now we're getting into cult land. Right. Elon Musk is building his own town in Texas. Wait, you, wait till you hear how creepy this sounds. Elon Musk is planning a utopia in Texas. Guess who else was? The Waco guy, David Koresh. Exactly. Remember? Didn't he work, tried. Didn't work out well. A whole new town on, in te- on thousands of acres of farmland recently bought outside the state capital of Austin. So he's outside the city limits, so it's unincorporated right. so far. Right. So I guess it's like Waco. Do what you want. There's yeah. one sheriff. And he ain't going to care if you pay him with candy and cash. Yeah. Deeds and land records show the extent of the project, and the billionaire and Twitter uh, owner has attended meetings with landowners and real estate agents in which he and his staff have outlined the ideas for the project that he calls sort of a Texas utopia along the Colorado River where staff could both work and live. I don't want 
work, no, work and live don't go together for me. No. Work is work, life is life. Right. Plus, do you want to be? You want to hang out with people you No, I don't want to live with my coworkers. No. Maybe comedians, they're different, yeah. but not all of them. We hang out. Just some. Sometimes. Yeah, I don't know that I want to. I don't want to hang out with you all the time. No, but even comedians, we choose one another. So it's not like being forced. Let's say you work at Google or tesla and you hate your boss and now he's your fucking neighbor right. you know no uh-uh plus you know google the kohler village i don't need to get into it all of it but if any of you are interested in a in a what work and live situation in the, schnotes. in the schnotes you know the bathroom fixtures kohler that guy kohler well his yeah. grandfather great or grandfather or great father founded the kohler village they all worked there I think we've talked about it. They got paid in Kohler money. Yeah. So then they could never really get out. Can't leave. Yeah. I mean, they gave him a bowling alley. It seemed to keep him happy for a while. Um, talk, top executives at the Boring Company, the Tesla's CEO's tunneling firm, have looked into placing the town in Bastrop County, 35 miles from Austin, allowing Mr. Musk to regulate some itch, issues in a mis... I can't say it. Um... You miss, I can't say it. It's too many words backwards for me. Um, but basically the town. People familiar with the project have said that his executives want staff in the area around Austin, including employees at the Bo Boring Company. It's actually called Boring. SpaceX and Tesla to be able to live in new homes for rents below market value. Yes. Okay, so now I'm renting from my boss. So if my boss says you're getting a pay cut, I'm stuck. Because I'm renting from him. And how long have I signed a lease for? I don't like it. No. A number of modular homes. Uh, what what do we know those are? Termites? Mobile homes. Mobile homes. Modular sounds better. They also... And there are some nice mobile homes these days, but... I they mean, also sell a flamethrower. Who sells a flamethrower? The boring company. The boring company? Yeah. Well, I do, do. I've always wanted a flamethrower. Well, I can... Um, they have modular homes already in place, as is a pool, an outdoor sports facility, and a gym. These are the people that have snuck in there that are familiar with it. Um, Elon made them do a flamethrower for the zombie apocalypse. Oh, there are signs stating, <laughs> welcome, Snail Brook. Um, that's what they're going to call it, Snail Brook. It refers to the mascot for the boring company, Gary the Snail. This man has too much <laughs> money <laughs> uh, and too much free time. Um, there are plans to build 110 homes near Snail Brook. Texas law says that a town needs at least 201 residents and approval from a ca county judge before it can be incorporated. They've filed documents to build 110 further homes in the town plan, calling it Project Amazing. Oh, I don't know. Where are the young termites? Would you agree to this, young people? No. I mean, I know I'm old. I, I'm, I'm not, no, I ain't getting near this shit. But maybe young people would. Maybe they'd be like, oh, this is great. Wow. But also, remember, it's Austin, and you're going to be really hot all summer. All summer. Like baking hot. Mm -hmm. um, they've st named, there's street names already. Boring Boulevard, Water Jet Way, Cutterhead Crossing, and Porpoise Place. There's no porpoises out there. Trust me. It's <laughs> Texas. I went out 45 minutes outside of Austin golfing with Ron somewhere. I don't even know where. Ben Crenshaw's golf course or something like that. And, I mean, it's it was barren. It The great thing about Austin is there are lakes and there are hills and there is green, but there's also the other part. And, right. yeah, the pictures that they've Google Earth, I'm not seeing a lot of going on there uh, aesthetically. With a lot Nate. of tumbleweeds. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! They're gonna the homes will be offered under a lease to buy setup. Oh no! That's trickery. Yep. Um, the realtor said you're on the west side of Bastrop, the east side of Austin, so it's very easy for people to commute. I don't know Austin. I'll have to ask Ron. Ron won't know though. He never goes except where anywhere to golf. He'd be like, "Is there a golf course out there?" <laughs> no, Ron. Well, then I don't know where it is. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. He owns 6,000 acres, Musk does. Wow. 
Um, he left California more than two years ago. He complained it was a place of overregulation, over litigation, and over taxation. But then he came back as he made a deal with Hoopty Ha, Gavin. Um, the Texas plan includes a private compound for Mr. Musk that may be built away from the town. People familiar, yeah, of course, he ain't living in the town. No. No. Ah. People familiar with the plan said all lands have been personally approved by the billionaire. Many yeah. of the sellers have had to sign non disclosure agreements. I wouldn't sell. No. No. Wow. Local officials said they had to sign similar agreements when they were made aware that the boring company was coming to the area. The They've applied to environmental authorities on the state level to discharge 1,442,000 uh, 1, gallons of treated wastewater into the Colorado River every day. Huh. <sighs> I just don't... They're starting. I mean... It's it's happening. This isn't like that's crazy. I know. Snail Brook. Come on. Corpus Way. There has to be better jobs for the youngsters, right? Than to work for this crazy person. <laughs> I don't trust him one bit. He changes his mind every goddamn five seconds. Right. So what if he decides he's bored with Snail Brook and now I'm stuck in some thing I've already paid rent on? Right. Yeah. They're going to be able to be about $800 a month, which is less than Austin is, I'm sure, way less. But then, what, we go to the pool and there's all your coworkers? Yeah. And then at work, do you want to play pickleball at five? Yeah, no. I, have a, I have a pickleball time. <laughs> um, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's a Texas utopian town, anyway. Um, the site already includes a number of trailer homes, pool, blah, 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 blah. There you have it. I want to hear from the young people, young termites. Would you do that? Yeah. Maybe they don't care. Maybe. But maybe they should think about it. And that's where you come in. I would find something else. Somewhere I go to work and I leave. Or I work from home. But I'm not living on his property and I'm not renting from him. I'm not leased, you know, leased to own bullshit. Right. Yeah. Update! <laughs> this is so amazing. So whatever wavy.com is, a termite sent this to me. Are you are you in Virginia or near Virginia? Because you're getting your first Bucky's. Yeah! But the article, it says, uh, Bucky's, the Texas-based chain known for its massive convenience stores, is planning to open its first Virginia location in, North, in New Kent County. The 74,000-square-foot store with 120 fueling stations and 557 parking spots is planned for the exit such and such. Um... The, the Facebook uh, post was quickly shared by more than 2,000 people thrilled to visit the future New Kent store. But if you're out of the loop, you might be asking, why are people so excited for the gas station? Well, in the words of comedian and Bucky's super van, Kathleen yeah! Madigan, yeah, <laughs> Bucky's is not just a gas station. It is a lifestyle. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I got quoted. I'm so happy. Fantastic. Yeah, I hope they invite me to the opening because no. the real Bucky's there, the real mascot. They will employ 175 people, cool. and it'll be just a tad smaller than the largest one, which opened in Luling, Texas. Hmm. Yeah. Some people are worried about the traffic. Don't have to worry about the traffic. Nope. No. Everybody's in and out. Yep. It, well, you know, there's enough sp space. Right. They buy enough space. Okay, moving on. Holy <laughs> shit, they found it. That's on my update. This is crazy. A solid gold swastika disc is the oldest known reference to Odin of Valhalla, the Norse god of war and death, say archaeologists. People don't know that the swastika was used long before Hitler, and it didn't mean bad things initially. I, don't, I didn't know that. Yeah, the Vikings used it. Uh, other cultures did too. Um, it's the first piece of evidence that Odin was worshipped as early as the 5th century. And if you've never seen Vikings that was initially on History Channel, I don't know where it is now, where you can find it now, but it's one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. It is historically accurate. All the actors are great because they're not American people. They're actually Swedes and Norwegians and Prime. Prime it's on Prime. Yep. Oh, it's so good. I wish I, I wish it was something I hadn't seen yet. It's that good. You want to? You wish you could be brand new to it again. Um, one of the experts who made the discovery said, "I can't bring, I can't bring my arms down in pure ecstasy." Danish scientists have found the oldest known reference, and uh, they found. They announced that a gold disc discovered in 2020 is unequivocally evidence that shows Odin, one of the supreme gods of the Nordic pagan religions, was worshipped as early as 401. So they found it in 2020, but they had to research it to make sure it was for reals. 
It's for reals. Okay. Um, Odin was a god of war and death who ruled over Valhalla, a majestic hall dedicated to those killed in battle. He was predominantly worshipped by Norse and later Viking kings, warrior chieftains, and their men, according to the National Museum of Denmark. The disc carries the inscription, He is Odin's Man. It is believed to refer to the figure portrayed on the disc, an unknown king or great man who is said to have then had the name Jaga or Jagaz. 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 <laughs> Sounds like Jackass. Yeah, there is a recognizable swastika symbol on the dip, which was assi- on the disc, which was a sign of well-being and long life to the pagans of Northern Europe and Scandinavia. National Museum's runol- runologist, runologist, and script researcher <laughs> said it's the first time in world history that Odin's name is mentioned. And it takes North mythology all the way back to the beginning of the fourth century. They say it's a huge discovery and a moment of pure ecstasy. The type of inscription is extremely rare. We may find uh, we may we find one maybe every fifty years. And this time, it's turned out to be world history. That's awesome. Yep, it was unearthed in the village of Vindelev, central Jutland, and dubbed the something something. They think it was buried more than fifteen hundred years ago. Now, That's before cool. I have a cu- couple uh, other holy shits, I found it, but I usually do what are we what are we watching, and we have to talk about this. Okay. First of all, March Madness, tiny sports thing. So like great. I don't really know college basketball, but um, I will tell you right now, you have a bracket. It, I have a bracket. Yeah, I filled out a bracket. <laughs> but me. congratulations to Lewis Black. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know if he's listening, but um, he is a, in the one in my. Oh my god, he went to first. <gasps> and he hasn't called yet? I can't believe he hasn't called today. He probably hasn't looked. <laughs> I'm in 32nd. I'm terrible. Where am I? Um, let's see. 12th. I picked mine based on hair. Hair? Oh, I yeah. I think we should have a separate, um, <laughs> like, I just like to talk about their uniforms and the colors, yeah. like, and their, their, who's got the best hair. I it's totally honest. superficial <laughs> and not... I like basketball, but I don't know half these colleges. I don't even know where they're at. I have to Google where they're at. All right, just call Lewis. He knows where everything is. Wow, he's in first place. That's crazy. So I hope everybody's... And Mizzou lost. So I was sad, but we made it as far as we have made it in a long time. March Madness is on if you're into that. But more importantly, Malaysian Flight 370. People have been yelling at me. Well, I watched it, and then I was going to talk about it last week, but... I didn't make it back. Um, Much like the people on the airplane. Three episodes. Yes, the people on the airplane didn't make it back either. Sad times. Uh, If you've never seen my special Bothering Jesus, it's on Netflix, and I have the longest joke I've ever written in my life. There's two parts to it. It's worth it. It goes on and on because it went on that long. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't really write jokes. I just tell stories or whatever that are funny, but... This was really my interpretation of what I felt like watching the whole thing. And if you want to see it, it's on, on that Netflix. But I've already, I already know a lot because I was obsessed with it. And I'm very rarely a know-it-all. But this subject, I'm kind of the one you don't want to talk to at the bar because I know too much. Um, these three episodes. So I've talked. my mom and dad vote with me that we're all on board that the pilot did it. My sister, I think so too. and I haven't talked to my brother yet, my sister thinks the cargo thing, the, the immense amount of cargo that was loaded in at the last minute that was never x-rayed or security cleared, she thinks that cargo had something to do with it, and it's the Russians or the Chinese. But here's the thing about the show. They put these people on. Um, there's a lot of... Hey, maybe this happened. But I mean, yeah. the, the one guy saying the guy could have climbed down into the floor underneath the plane and turned off all the radar, or the guy could have just turned, the pilot could have turned it off. Like, right. I didn't see in anything, I, I still think the pilot did it. And then if you Google that guy, the most bizarre thing that no one's talked, well, I don't even know why they included this person. There's a guy. <coughs> His name is Blaine Gibson. He's the one who claims he found the first piece of the missing plane in right. Madagascar, somewhere over there, That which would have meant it went to the Indian Ocean, not the South China Sea. I don't think it went to the South China Sea. I think the guy took it over, 
And then he cut off everybody's oxygen yeah. and he passed out. And then eventually a plane, because yeah. people were like, why would you wait six hours? He didn't wait. The he passed out too. Yeah. Right. And people go, well, people don't do that. Egypt Air, that guy did it. Mm -hmm. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, boom, they're all dead. Yep. Yes, they do do it. Yep. We know they do it. And he had a lot going on. Um, do I have proof this man did it? No, but his simulator at home, there's reports that he did already check that path out. Now, there's right. reports that say, no, that report wasn't right. Nobody can get their shit together on that. Um, there's a French guy who says the Americans know everything. I mean, that guy, I was just like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and you speak English. The Americans, I'm sure Stop. we do our share of bad things, as every nation with power does. But this, what? What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, a guy told him a thing. <laughs> it, it's, it was like watching, you know, the 50,000 theories on who shot Kennedy. And, right. the, you know, you, you got to. But there's the, the guy Blaine Gibson that he now claims, and wait till you get a look at this guy, that he's found 30 pieces of the airplane. Just you. One guy. Yep. In the whole world, you coincidentally have found, I think he went to a plane graveyard, which if there's one, if you drive from Phoenix to Tucson, there's a plane graveyard out there. Fascinating. It's totally fascinating. Wow. Uh, and, and he yanks some pieces. I don't believe a word this man says. I also don't understand, though, who is paying this guy um, and yes, he does speak Russian and yes, he has been, lived in Russia or so it says, right. they say, I looked everything up about this guy. He's a former lawyer or is still a lawyer. I don't know. And he lives in Seattle, but he had to go underground because there's so many threats to his life. I think the man's completely fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah, no. yeah. And people have fallen for it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's proved no. that that was a, um, piece of the actual airport. And they think it might be. But then I would also say, how many other Boeing 77s are we missing? There's a lot of assumptions and maybe. And um, yeah. The aviation journalist guy, I didn't care for him. Uh, he just kept going through all the things that could have happened. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, um, yeah no. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, uh, the Blaine Gibson guy I found the most fascinating, though. And I don't know why we're still giving this guy credence when we're not sure these pieces are from. It could be from any, any 777. But I don't know how many else have crashed. And nobody did that in the show. Lots of things in the show, they just kind of threw it all out there and then you decide without somebody being in charge I hated the of the storyline. The, well, he was an aviation journalist. Yeah. Like, no. Uh, no, you know who I liked? The old white guy with glasses that was an aviation expert, used to be a pilot, yeah. him and his buddies, mm -hmm. and they are scientists, and they are pilots. They, mm -hmm. they are the real deal. Yep. Uh, engineers, they've taken all the information, yep. and they said, no, the pilot took it down. There's no other thing that is plausible um, out of all this thing. And the guy said, look, there's a lot of quacks in this show. I've never seen a documentary where somebody in the documentary called out other people in the documentary. Like, who who's in charge of this? Like, hey, why don't we try to all just be kind? You know, and the other, I don't blame the guy, though. I'm sure he was like, I shouldn't even be on this show. These people are crazy. <laughs> then there's some lady in Florida as part of Tom Nod or something where you can just go look on your own. She swears she found it. And she's like, I've made all kinds of calls and no one will take my call. Well, lady, you're... Uh, well, the Blaine guy, the Blaine guy says he gets his information on Facebook. He, he quote, spoke to some oceanographers on, oh, stop yeah. it. And then the lady in Florida, I mean, she seems like a very nice I lady. Like but I mean, who's going to, uh, nobody's going to take that seriously. They put it out too fast. And they didn't they, a lot. Yeah, I don't think they did a good job. They, no. Here's what they did do a good job for the younger termites who might not know. They do a very good job of the of what happened. Right. They do a terrible job on what it caused it. it. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to see the facts and the replays, like if you saw my act but you never seen, you weren't paying attention, there is a picture of the guy. So a termite capture screenshot <laughs> it. What I do the joke about? Whoa, whoa, he's smoking a cig in a Hilton in Kuala Lumpur. I'm like, oh, um, yeah. So I, I think it's totally fun to watch. Yeah. I give it. You know, entertainment, four stars. But, yeah. you know, and is the Malaysian government that corrupt? I don't know. They were going to Beijing. Was the cargo something that couldn't get to China? 
and then we decided we're just going to shoot the plane out. Well, if we did, how come nobody ever saw any of that? And how come no debris is washed up in the South China right. Sea or on those borders? It's all the way, if we're to believe crazy Blaine, that stuff washed up over in, by the Indian Ocean. I think it's at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. And I don't know that you're, we're never going to find it. Right. right. Agreed. Okay. Back to, holy shit, they found it. I'm giving that entertainment value, though. Yeah. You should watch it. Especially if you were busy or have a life you and could. Uh, right, but I watched it in real time, every yeah. day, all day. While I was doing stuff, but I had it on. And then the coverage started dwindling and dwindling. And I'm like, because it used to be the first thing in the morning. The tar search continues for flight, uh, Malaysian flight 370. And then it would be like the third story. I'm like, wow, we're just going to let this die out. Yeah. We're just going to not give a shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Australians gave a big shit. They took out... <laughs> They, they, they took, they took out giant boats in the Indian ocean and there's clips of that. And I saw those waves. Uh, oh my God. Nope. Yeah. I'm crying. I'm laying yeah, down. Yeah. I would never, wouldn't go. Um, it's so terrifying. Yeah. They tried really hard, yeah. but at some point Malaysia has got to step it up here right. and I don't think they're going to. No, I think they want it to go away. They're still functioning as an airline. I haven't bothered my brother yet, but I'm going to, I haven't had time. I've been, well, I was a Graceland. Time <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, they found it. This is a good one. I hike. How come I don't ever find anything? Thank you for your update. We appreciate yes, the update. Go watch it, Termite. While trekking through the Swiss Alps, a hiker came across an ancient Roman coin buried in the rubble. After reporting the finding to a local archaeological unit, a whole horde of ancient artifacts found, were found buried at the site, which archaeologists now believe to have been a holy place of worship a site to lay offerings to the Roman mountain gods. This site was discovered in 2020 and evacuations began in the summer of 2022 by a team of archaeologists from um, uh, Bern, the capital of Switzerland. So far, they've uncovered 100 coins, Whoa. 27 small rock crystals, 59 Roman shoe nails. I guess they're putting their flip-flops back together. Those <laughs> Romans, you give them a shoe, they're yeah, walking. They got nails. A brooch and a fragment of a leaf-shaped votive plate. <laughs> this site is unusual because of the amount of coins in the location. More common uh, finds coins, brooches, or mountain passes. This site, however, is far above human habitation uh, today in Roman times. It's 2,590 uh, 2, meters above sea level, nearly 8,500, and definitely not a pass. This was a little hiking man. He made it yeah. all the way up there. With a lot of nails. Yeah. It sits on a plateau between mountain peaks of Amartern Horn and Wild Struble. She describes it as very impressive. The site is several hours hike from the nearest road and also far from hiking paths. We had a flyer supplies up there in camp for several days. Wow, look at this little this little marching guy. He made it all the way up there by himself. That's amazing. I wouldn't go that far by myself. Well, he might have had a friend with him, but whatever. They're very far away from civilization. Um, we're moving on. News! <laughs> we need music for that. Portland? Oregon? You're in the trouble box. Oh. Yep. And I have had a lot of fun in Portland. My cousin Tommy lives there, and he's never short on fun. <laughs> My cousin Tommy. Uh, and he's so funny. But anyway, Walmart set to close all stores in Portland amid record-breaking retail theft. Wow. Now, downtown Portland does need a little help. I'll yeah. be the first one to admit that. Yeah. Uh, even though the theater I work is downtown, and I've stayed in the hotels down there, um, it just took a hit during COVID. There's a lot of homeless people. There's a lot of random, crazy, weird things. I saw a guy, um, there it was a Starbucks on a corner, and I went in, and there were kids working behind the counter, and a homeless guy came in, and I guess his name was Teddy, mm -hmm. and Teddy leapt over the counter, over oh. the glass steel where all the pastries are. Uh -huh. He jumped like a, um, like a basketball player. It was amazing how high he got. He jumped, and they just went, Teddy, you know you can't do this. <laughs> and, like, it happens all the time. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, right. to see, and he was trying to grab food out of the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just a lot of crazy shit going on. Um, and I think it's fixable. 
But anyway, you're losing your Walmarts. Not that I care about Walmart. Um, <laughs> because of uh, theft. We have, they, Walmart says we have nearly 5,000 stores across the U.S., and unfortunately, some do not meet our financial expectations. While our underlying business is strong, these specific stores haven't performed as well as we'd hope. The closures, which result in nearly 600 employees being laid off, come after a statement by Walmart CEO that's noting that the record-breaking theft had undercut the company's economic performance of late. Hmm. Yep. Maybe it's more security guards. Company shuttering stores in Portland has become increasingly common. Last year, a clothing store rand, rained? PDX shut down operations, and the company specifically cited the cost of doing business in, in the wake of historic retail theft. Um, in a similar vein, Nike and Cracker Barrel, oh no, they no. closed in 2022 with companies citing similar reasons. Who's stealing from Cracker Barrel? What, you want something out of the gift shop? You want a Christmas penguin going down a slide? <laughs> How about a Reba McIntyre CD from 1982? You want that? Yeah, there's peacock <laughs> things. Yeah, I don't know. Portland, what say you? What's going on? I only know from visiting and doing shows. But I might have to open a little business section on this thing because I'm always kind of oh, fat. Yeah, yeah I, like I sneak around yeah. and read my business articles. Yeah, and then, do. yeah, we'll put we'll make a new little segment there. Well, it's business for normal people. It's things right. that affect us, not things that are hard about companies. Because I have another one that should have been Tuesday morning is closing half of its stores after filing for bankruptcy. Now, we've talked about Tuesday morning on here before, but yeah. if you've ever been in one, I mean, don't take an old person who can fall because there's so much shit on the floor. I mean, <laughs> you got to pick, clean up the aisles, people. And then <laughs> that store, I always felt too, was like, I felt like it was a yard sale and then everybody took the stuff that didn't sell and threw it back inside. <laughs> Like, but you'd find good stuff. You just had to look, yeah. but nothing made sense. Like you'd be in the picture frames and all of a sudden there would just be a dish spoon. towels. <laughs> yeah. Here, do you need a wooden giant fork for your kitchen? No. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> when it comes to off price retailers, there are a few destinations more exciting than Tuesday morning. You never know what you'll find there. Each location's selection is different. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, as much as I travel, I should have known that I could have gone. I thought they were all kind of, they had the same stuff. Um, you may want to head to your Tuesday morning soon because a Dallas-based retailer is closing half of its stores. Oh. Mm, on February 14th, they try out, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, marking the second time it's done so in three years. Now, if a human being did that, an individual, not a corporation, mm -hmm. your ass would be in jail the oh. second time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. At the time. <laughs> the CEO said it was a challenging consumer environment. Start by picking up the shit in your aisles. <laughs> totally. I can't take my mom in there for fear she'll fall on her bad knee. No. Right. It's bad. <laughs> it's taking drastic measures to stay afloat with plans to shutter over half of its 487 stores in 2023. You can go see on the list in the show notes if your city is one of them. I'm not going to read them all. Nope. This... Okay, last one in the business one. I don't know why so many came up this week. Yeah. This makes me laugh because I totally agree. I used to love The Gap. We've talked about that too, but yeah. this is the official, official, uh, is the this gap? is finance from Yahoo. This is the title of the article. It looks as if The Gap has simply given up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Gap widens. <laughs> The gap has now become a ditch. <laughs> it's just, here, it's, this That's is what it says. Totally it's just straight up, it's just straight up bleak at Gap. Gap <laughs> is showing its beleaguered investor base yet again that the retailer looks like it has flat out given up on its chance of being around in 10 years. Sales wow. fell in all four divisions, paced by a dismal 9% drop at the former top mall destination. Gap stock fell more than 6% in pre marketing trading on Friday, another disappointing holiday quarter. Dig deep into the results and the signs of a retailer growth growing irrelevant. And management realizing just that aren't hard to find. And ending inventory pl ending inventory plunged 21% from the prior year as the company pushed deep th through deep sales to clear excess inventory. Well, prop the, you know what the problem is? Your inventory sucks. Yeah. I used to go get summer t-shirts and shorts. Even if they only lasted a year, they were priced right there. Yeah good. I'll get five t-shirts and three pairs of shorts 
walk out of there, mm-hmm. spent less than 200 bucks. Yep. If they go to next summer, great. Right. If not, I'll do it again. Right. I mean, I didn't expect it to be quality, but it, okay. at least it fit. Right. Things were cut correctly. <sighs> and then the and uh, yeah, the sleeves are weird. Everything it just got cheap, and I don't know. Yeah. The company pushed through deep sales to clear excess inventory. Notable at the once hot old Navy division, where sales have fallen six percent. Don't tell my nieces that, <laughs> or my mom. They love old Navy. Ideally, in an economy that's still growing, fundament- a fundamentally solid retailer would be buying inventory to sell to human beings, not slashing and burning inventory in an attempt to raise cash. Gapso now says it's identified $550 million in cost savings in the past six months. I don't think so. Don't that. that may help to make earnings number in the second half of the year, but it does nothing to set the company up for lasting success. <laughs> I think they're, they're done. Yeah. But they should be done. Yeah. There's nothing in there that has quality, yeah. and I don't think they've lowered the prices to reflect that. If you're going to me, sell me a T-shirt where one arm is cut shorter than the other arm, <laughs> that shirt needs to be $5. Because then I'd go, you know what? I can fix it with my tailoring lady down at the strip mall. Right. She'll make this sleeve the right thing for five bucks. So now it's a ten dollars shirt. <laughs> There's so many, so many closings. It's sad times, but I mean, some of these should be gone. Right. It's ridiculous. In other news, and I'm gonna try to find it today because I couldn't find it before now. Ranch flavored ice cream, and it's only coming to Walmart. I don't like to support Walmart. I don't know. Uh, maybe it says it in this article. <laughs> but Walmart, I, I will admit, sometimes I go get the cat, my night guards, giant bags of food there. Well, Just because it's there. I'd rather go to PetSmart because people bring their dogs in there. It's more fun. But whatever. Um, but then it's about the, the people. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, in PetSmart. There's a, it's a special kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The special edition ice cream, which apparently pairs perfectly with salty snacks, will be sold for a limited time. Are you someone who likes to dip your fries in your milkshake? No. You someone who loves a dessert that isn't too sweet? The newest ice cream flavor from Van Leeuwen might be right up your alley. The company says it's, it teamed up with Hidden Valley to release a limited edition ranch dressing flavored ice cream. The pictures of it, it looks like a light green, but not like mint green. It looks like a, yeah, it doesn't look right. Sounds horrible. It's going to go on sale a short time later this month in honor of National Ranch Day. Okay. The Midwest in my DNA just activated, said the uh, CEO person. <laughs> you said that. Yeah, don't, don't put all wow. of us Midwest people in that same boat. Wonderful. It's part of their new spring lineup. Uh, the, it's going to be four ninety eight a piece for a pint. I'll go check it out. I'll do the work of the Lord. Okay. I'll spend the five bucks. I will go. I'll go today I after it. I do this. Okay. I'll go. <laughs> cats need food anyway. Um, okay. I This makes me kind of happy okay. because I did not agree with Brexit. We're not going to get political here. No. But I think it's better to work with others yep. than to try to go it alone. True. Well, the going it alone ain't working so good for England. No. The Downton Abbey Castle, yeah. it exists. Really? The one in Downton Abbey, uh-huh. which I loved the show. Right. Love, 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 yeah. love, love. That would be something me and my mom would be watching, and my dad would go, how could you watch this shit? I'm like, get out of the family room. If that's how you're going to talk when we watch this show, we are having a nice time. Get out. Um, Downton Abbey Castle halts weddings due to Brexit. Now, this is from me going to Ireland. Um, usually, well, before COVID, I try to go every May. Uh, when when the EU decided they were going to act, EU's been around for longer than people think, like since the 60s. Right. But when it became the official EU, meaning a, a kid from Poland could go work in Ireland right. um, or Scotland, or you could run around Europe. You didn't have to get special papers. It's not like an American trying to get your work visa. So... The poorer countries, the people that really wanted jobs, were going to places where help was needed. And then when they canceled that, those kids all went home. Now you don't have enough people 
to work. Right. Well. Good man. Thanks. I don't know how they didn't see that coming. It's a problem. It is a problem. Is it a... It is a problem the butler of Downton Abbey might have sympathized with. High Clear Castle in southern England, where the early 20th century period drama about the lives of aristocrats and their servants was filmed, is facing a serious staffing crunch. The reason is the dearth of workers from the EU, which was for which has forced a dearth. I've never even heard of that word. Dearth. It obviously means lack of, but I never heard of it. Which has forced owner Fiona Carnovan to mothball the castle's main business of hosting larger weddings on the site. We've stopped being able to offer any weddings of any substantial size because of Brexit. Oh, she's a countess. A ca- caravan, a countess who owns High Clare with her husband said. Wonderful. There are there are no staff, she said, speaking uh, from the morning room at the Victorian castle that sits on a 5,000 acre estate. What? Okay, hillbillies. Oh why don't you sell a thousand acres? Right. Huh? And then right. you can have a wedding. <laughs> this is the denial of the super rich that always, well, we have no one to serve us tea. <laughs> we'll sell a fucking, God dang. Let me help you. <laughs> it used to host around 25 weddings with more than 100 guests. Weddings around the 20, or with around 20 guests are still possible. Who wants to go to a wedding with only 20 people in a giant castle? Right. I mean, it could be super fun, right. depending. Maybe. Yeah, I could think of 19 comedians that I would do it with, and it'd be really fun. <laughs> be but, you know, you got to say, if you're inviting the comedian, you got to invite their spouse. or Yeah, I don't know. Um, revenues from other parts of High Claire's businesses, such as the gift shop, the house that opens to the public during the summer months, has also fallen, which Carnivon says reflects not just Brexit, but also the hit to the hospitality industry from COVID and the cost of living prices. It's staffing challenges in particular illustrate the still unfolding impacts of Britain Brexit on Britain's labor market three years after the UK's departure from the European Union, its biggest parting trading partner. Mm -hmm. You lost how I am not, I, I did barely even passed uh, econ 101 in college. It got way too math hard. I don't understand those things. I don't understand business. But I can understand if we're not staying part of the union, these guys are leaving. Right. That's it. There's Polish guys bartending in Killarney. Well, they have to. Well, they're coming to get the job if if it's available, which means nobody else there. You know, Lahinch, it's a tiny town by the sea in Ireland. And there's a the guy that's like from Poland, and he's been working there for, I don't know, a long, long time. And then he goes, he gets a bunch of money, and he goes back to Poland for a while. And then he comes back, and... Show me a picture of his kids and shit. And I'm like, you had to come all the way here? To bartend. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, anyway. Uh, a vital workforce of EU students attending university in Britain who were able to work during weddings is no longer available. When we go to our usual agencies to try to find people, they're not there. If we ask for 10, three might turn up. There's, there's nobody we haven't asked. Why don't you pay more? And maybe yeah. some actual British kids will show up. Right. Hmm? 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 A number, the number of EU students admitted to British universities fell 50% in 2021. Applications dropped 40%, partly due to the uncertainty by Brexit. Well, yeah. Um, uh, Oh, they used to have afternoon tea open to the public. That's closed, too. The gift shop. I mean, it sucks that it's closed, but seriously, you're sitting on 5,000 acres. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of them. You can't sell a thousand of them to to more. staff it up or just pay more. Right. I don't know. Because those kids weren't there before the EU, so who was doing it then? Somebody right. was. Right. I can't believe two two individuals own that place. No. That's crazy. <laughs> but that's where sometimes I just think rich people don't, you know, they just sit around there with their teacups going, where did everyone go? <laughs> Oh, well, do you want me to make this by myself? I don't think so. I bet you never to make tea. Cincinnati, Uh-oh. which one of you had a serval and gave it cocaine? Hmm? What? A serval is an African oh cat. You ever seen pictures of it? Yeah. Somehow, 
People and exotic pets that go crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> You've probably heard of Cocaine Bear, the box office hit about a black bear's drug-fueled feeding frenzy. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but everybody no. says it's not as good as the title. The title yeah. gets you in. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. But have you heard of Cocaine Cat? The no. phrase started trending on Twitter Thursday like the movie. It's based on a true story. Oh, Only this no. one's about a wild cat that was captured in Cincinnati. It turned out to have cocaine in its system. Unlike the movie, this isn't set in the 1980s. It happened earlier this year. It was only made public recently for legal reasons. Coming on the heels of Cocaine Bear movie, we're not surprised it has gone viral. The capture. The big cat was kept as a pet and escaped from his owner's car during a police stop. He had it in the car. Have you ever Google Serval? I mean, for if you're yeah. listening and you've never seen one. S-E-R-V-A-L. It's a long-legged, big-ass cat. Whoa. Yeah. They're fascinating, but I mean, to own one... They got a call, and the Hamilton County dog wardens. They weigh 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They got a call what people thought was to be a leopard spotted in a tree. Oh, Cincinnati. 24 inches. 24 inches high. Yeah. It's two foot tall. Uh, Jesus. (laughs) I love that somebody in Cincinnati thought it was a leopard. (laughs) Oh, my God. Somebody call the dog people. They called the dog warden. Uh, responders were, bla- were able to retrieve Amri, that's his name, and bring him back to the shelter where the medical team called in an expert whose credentials included working on Tiger King, a uh, case in the Zanesville tragedy, to identify the species. The expert suspected Amri was actually a serval, a long-legged, wi- big-eared wildcat that is native to sub-Saharan Africa and illegal to own in Ohio. Mm-hmm. To confirm that, they took a sample. This is how they found out he had coke. They took a DNA sample to confirm he was a serval and also tested him for narcotics. Why would one do that? Why would I look at a wild animal and think, I wonder if he did some blow this morning? He tested positive for exposure to cocaine, and they they concluded indeed he was um, a serval. Why did the animal test? Oh, here. Why did they test it for drugs? The short answer is a... Capuchin monkey named Neo. Last year, local animal control seized the monkey from the Cincinnati home after a veterinarian who saw videos of him believed he had ingested Xanax and or cocaine and was in need of medical care. Oh, my God. The monkey. Neo was test- tested positive for amphetamines, underwent treatment, and is now safely in an undisclosed la- location. His owner was indicted on animal cruelty. Since then, it's become standard protocol to test it for... Um, Narcotics for any animal that is more exotic than the usual household pet. Wow. I wonder if the night guards are sneaking blow in here. Maybe. Maybe. You don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they did with him. They probably got him in Kentucky. Um, oh, they sent him to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens after a few days. I, said, I guess he's there. Wow. Oh. That's, who's doing? Who's giving their cat blow? Yeah. America, what are we doing? America, 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 what are we doing? Wow. Uh, all right, moving on. Do you have eighty-one million dollars? <laughs> Not yet. <sighs> eighty-one million dollar yacht linked to Russian oligarch is about to hit the auction block. Boom. Boom. Uh, Antigua and Barbuda say the vessel named the Alpha Nero was abandoned in the Antiguan Harbor last February and belongs to sanctioned Russian oligarch Andrei Gurve. We've talked about him on this podcast. Yeah. He denies the boat is his. So this is the thing about boats. Well, we've talked about it. I won't go back into it, but it's very hard to know exactly who owns it. Sure. And if people don't claim ownership... Like, let's say you know there's, oh, shit, I'm going to get in trouble. There's bad things. I don't want that to be in my boat. You just walk away. Right. Say, it's not my boat. Not mine. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. He denies the boat's his, so authorities have posted public oh, notice, giving other potential owners 10 days to come forward. If no one emerges, the auction will commence. Yeah. It's loaded with luxury, has a 39-foot infinity pool, a jacuzzi, a spa, and a helipad. It's first re- uh, reported frequently used by his family. The auction is the natural consequences of a rash of seized yachts following Russians' invasion of Ukraine last summer. Uh, or last year. Last year, Gibraltar auctioned off Aximo, a $65 million yacht that was owned by Dmitry Pompiansky, a sanctioned Russian steel billionaire. 
Uh, the auction officials said they have a staggering amount of interest and more than 115 inquiries and 28 inspections by potential buyers. The yacht eventually fetched 63 bids and sold for $38 million. $38 million. Whoa. Mm-hmm. This was originally purchased, the one that's auctioning off, for, in 2014 for $120 million and is being conducted to prevent a future hazard since the luxury vessel is not being maintained. That's what I'm saying. You need a whole crew every day. Uh-huh. It's like a house, a giant, giant house. And somebody has to take care of it. And, and boats go to shit way faster than a house. Mm-hmm. That's just, I'm going to save this story. I'm going to save this one. All right. Well, then I'll tell you this story. Because this is going to this is gonna fuck up my parents. <laughs> They've already <laughs> said it started. So who are they? My parents. Okay. They are the they. So if you live in uh, the Gulf part of Florida, like Sarasota, Fort Myers, blah, 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 sometimes they have this thing called the red tide. Oh no! And yeah. I went down. I think my parents at the time they didn't know that it had arrived yet, right. and we went down to the beach to take a giant beach walk. We're gonna go like three or four miles. And as soon as we got out of the car, my mom's down half a lung because she had lung cancer and they fixed all that, but she's still missing half, you know, she's down a lung. So she gets around just fine, but the coughing started with her. And then he started coughing. And then I started coughing. And I'm like, what is going on? What, I mean, hacking coughing. It's the red tide. If you have any kind of allergies or whatever, I mean, you have to leave. It's that bad. And then if the winds come... Like, my parents don't live on the beach. They're, like, five miles inland. It will send it, and he's already been complaining about it. As of right now, it's, does but it here's. Come, does it come every year? It does not come every year. And then sometimes it comes at different times. You just hope when you're there, like, if you spend all your money on vacation and you go down there and it's there, I mean, unless you have super lungs made yeah. of steel, I don't know. Wow. Here's what's heading your way, Florida. A 5,000-mile-wide blob of seaweed is headed for Florida, threatening tourism across the Caribbean. A gargantuan mass of seaweed that formed in the Atlantic Ocean is headed for floors of Florida and other coastlines through the Gulf of Mexico, threatening to dump smelly and potentially dangerous heaps across beaches and put a big damper on tourist season. The seaweed, a variety called sargassum, has long formed large blooms in the Atlantic, and scientists have been tracking massive accumulations since 2011. But this year's sargassum mass could be the largest on record, spanning more than 5,000 miles from the coast of Africa to the Gulf of Mexico. The blob is currently pushing west and will pass through the Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico during the summer, with the seaweed expected to become prevalent on the beaches in Florida around July. Well, at least that's not their super... You know, the winter months are more the getaway. Yeah, but the children. It began, it's the children. It's the children. I know. Yeah. Well, and it's the locals, you know. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. It began to form early, uh, and it doubled down in size between January and December and January. The mass was larger in January than it's ever been since the new region of sarcasm growth in 2011. Wow. Yeah. He noted that in Barbados, locals were using... 1,600 dump trucks a day to clean the beaches of this seaweed to make it suitable for tourists and recreation on the beaches. It's a catch-all term, sargassum, but it can refer to more than 300 species of brown algae. Uh, The algae also, blah, 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 blah. blah. It's a floating habitat, so it has its upsides if you're a little marine creature. Mm -hmm. Um, But the gas that the rotting algae releases, hydrogen sulfide, is toxic and can cause respiratory problems. You have to be careful when you clean the beaches. The seaweed also contains arsenic in its flesh, making it dangerous if ingested or uses for used for fertilizer. <laughs> Mounds of algae dumped on beaches cost millions of dollars to clean up. Just like pants and cro- on the crops on the ground, the proliferation of seaweed can shift year to year based on ecological factors. Um, it's bringing that's more red tide with it, though. 5,000 mile. That's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. And it's debilitating. Well, it's totally a fun killer, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You can't, you have to leave. What are we going to do, just go hack? I mean, we could. We're going to Orlando. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to Gator. We're going to. We're going to Gator. 
<laughs> All right, this one's funny, then I'll do my feel-good story. Buffalo Wild Wings admits boneless wings are not true after lawsuit. What? Well, <laughs> first of all, I don't love a Buffalo Wild Wings, and here's why. And maybe somebody from there is listening. I love all the sports screens. I love that there's beer and wings. Yeah. The furniture is so cold and uncomfortable, you have to, like, bring a blanket to put under your ass, even if I have jeans on. It's freezing. I, that's all I think of when I see one. My ass will be freezing. Literally, I will freeze my ass off in there. I can't. And they don't have backs on the bar stools. And it's like, get you in, get you out. I don't know. I feel like it's, it's like. You're here for one game. You're, yeah. Here, here's your 12 wings. Here's your pitcher of beer. Shut up and go. Not a very homey feeling. Matter of fact, we were in uh, Midland, Texas. And it was the only thing open. And I'm like, God damn it. I mean, the food's fine. The burgers are fine. The wings are fine. But this is actually funny. I give them credit because they are sarcastically confirming the allegations of the outline lawsuit. Yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings responded to the lawsuit claiming its boneless wings are not actually made from wings. With the restaurant confessing to the allegations, a Chicago man filed a lawsuit against the chicken wing chain last week for false advertising. What kind of no life does this guy have? <laughs> Saying the boneless wings are overpriced since they are basically chicken nuggets. Chicken parts. Wow. Wake up. Eamon Hamill alleges in the lawsuit that Buffalo Wild Wings and franchise are inspired brands that the boneless wings are just slices of chicken breast meat dipped, fried, deep fried like wings. And the customers should either pay less for the boneless wings or not purchase them at all if they knew what the product was made of. That's a choice for Eamon. Right. The clear cut of false advertising should not be permitted as customers should be able to rely on the plain meaning of a product's name and receive what they are promised, the lawsuit says. Buffalo Wild Wings has responded. (laughs) It's true, the restaurant restaurant chain tweeted. Our boneless wings are all white meat chicken. Also, our hamburgers contain no ham. (laughs) (laughs) Our buffalo wings are zero... Our buffalo wings are 0% buffalo. <laughs> he claims he... This guy probably didn't get it. <laughs> he, you know, I'm sure he was like, right, that's what I'm saying, assholes. <laughs> um, they began selling their boneless wings about 20 years ago. They became one of the most popular menu items. They su- sarcastically confirmed the allegations that his boneless wings are not made of wings. Um, oh, my God. Um, Can you imagine being the judge? <laughs> Well, I, yeah. He is suing on allegations of false and deceptive business practices. I mean, what does it matter with you? I don't know. Somebody told him to, I'm sure. <laughs> and he went, okay, I'll be the guy. This is our feel good story. And then it's time to go get some ranch ice cream if I can find it. I'm going to go to two places. And if I can't find it after that, we're just going to have to guess what it tastes like, Termites, because I can't be driving around all day. I'll make you some. Irish Hunter believes there are two monsters in the Loch Ness after new footage emerges. What? Well, I really believe in this guy. Um, Ian O'Fadigan from County Donegal. I'm not sure I said that right because it's in Celtic. Thinks there should be actually, there there could be actually two monsters in the water. A Nessie Hunter, this guy has webcams set up everywhere and he monitors them. He's really into it. Yeah. Um, a Nessie hunter believes there could be actually two Loch Ness monsters after the new footage emerged that appears to so- show two creatures in the water at the same time. The mystery of Loch Ness monster has typically centered the I- on the idea of one unexplained creature that lives that is living deep in the Scottish Loch. But that may be about to change with the fresh footage showing a huge black shape moving in Loch Ness, and it does. And you can go look at it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you may say it's not the Loch Ness Monster, but something is alive and moving its ass around, and it's big. Um, and then people go, well, it's probably an eel. Right. I'm not saying the Loch Ness Monster isn't an eel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to come out and talk to you with eyes. It's not a cartoon thing. Not unless you're five. <coughs> right. Um, Nessie Hunter Ian O'Fadigan was monitoring a webcam of the lock when he spotted a dark present he estimated to be 30 feet long. Then within an hour, he spotted two humps surfacing not far away, and to his surprise, they appeared to be moving away from each other. He said, it's obvious that the two Nessie the humps are moving over a two-minute period, and the larger hump of the two has changed positions from the smaller one. Given the fact there's no disturbance of water visible between the objects, you would have to concur they are two separate moving creatures. 
Yeah. <laughs> he's cool. He's a young looking guy. Um, there's also the sheer scale, uh, the sheer scale of the earlier dark shape in the water to consider. He asked, what animal could be that long? What is, what is strikingly obvious about sightings at Loch Ness is that eyewitnesses could be viewing two very different creatures coexisting in one lake. What the other creature is, could be is completely unknown. Well, we do know there are a hell of a lot of eels in Loch Ness having the old rogue giant one. Having the old rogue giant one is not beyond the realm of reality. Oh, I see. So there's a giant one still left. Right. Why is that so... It's like when people say they catch the largest catfish in a lake that's never... Right. right. There's a grandpa out there somewhere. Uh-huh. Um, he says he's 58 years old. He thinks it's it's a handy explanation for, for the contrasting accounts of the monster's appearance. He said, this is only my opinion of Nessie being two different creatures, hence the abundance of different descriptions we have for her. The sighting was captured at Shoreland Lodges <clears throat> near Fort Augustus on the lock's southern shore using a webcam maintained by Visit... Inverness Loch Ness. He's probably the most prolific source of webcam sightings after logging on to watch the water from his home in Connie Donegal, Ireland. Good job. Yeah. Good job, Ian. Somebody's got, maybe I'll go on there, start monitoring it. That's that's when Lewis will tell me I've actually gone over the edge. Lou, what are you doing? I'm monitoring Loch Ness right now, Lewis. (laughs) Don't fucking call me about your basketball bullshit. (laughs) <laughs> termites all right i gotta wait um so new website new t-shirts before we sign off you like if you could go i love the website it's very clean and easy to use and just it just needed a facelift i was tired of you get tired of looking at it you have to look at it all the time and um thank you for rating the special and yes. go and do that because the, the 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 people know and that will keep it going and um you can also rate this podcast yeah i don't really pay we attention to all that but well, yeah. I mean, it's free. Great whatever. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That doesn't make any money, but it's nice to um to know that people are listening. And um, that's it. We're still in like first or second place on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So yay for that. Thank you, termites. We're in the race. We're in the race. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it dies down at some point, but for now, it's super fun to turn it on and go. Walk. There's my face. Where are you going? Oh, where am I going? <laughs> well, this weekend. I'm going to Milwaukee oh, and Wausau, Great. Get some Wisconsin, cow. Little, spotted cow. little Spotted Cow, head on down to the Milwaukee Public Market, Love that place. get some cheese from the cheese wheel people, maybe a Bloody Mary, yes. um, and then go down to the Main Street mm-hmm. for Bratwurst. It's, the best. it's the, just it's the, the best. best. Um, they have old school beers down there, too. Stuff I remember my grandparents, like hams. Stag. Oh, I know. Yeah. I ta- I ta- I ordered a hams just to see. Uh, no, no. no. Yeah, um, no. Then on to Foxwoods and Boston for two shows. Nice. Yeah, there's tickets left for the second show, the later show. Mm-hmm. The first one sold out. Um, Durham. I'm very excited about Durham, mm-hmm. the Carolina Barbecue Festival. Two nights there, a Friday and a Saturday. Fun. The Friday, I believe, is sold out. But the Saturday, because we put it on sale later, there's tickets left for the Saturday one. And then Ponte Verde, Florida, nice. which is so much fun. But that's where I'll always think of Bob Saget. Yeah, it's so weird. I know. I had just done that gig, and then he did it right after me. Mm-hmm. That's when he passed away. Um, and then one of my favorite American cities, Charleston, South Carolina, Wonderful. where I think I will get to see and have a drink with my friend Mandy Matney, Yay. the podcaster for the Murdoch trials and that and that i love that she put on twitter if you're just finding a bob out of, i love that the young people they're just so mean on twitter when they need to be right. like i should be to some people mm-hmm. and i just don't i mute them and fuck it but she's like if you're just getting involved in this trial in the last like two months i don't want to hear any of your opinions because <laughs> and i thought no oh, shit yeah. i've been working on this for years yeah. now you have no idea what you're talking about Pe- people are i think they're coming in at the last minute going well have you ever thought about this right. What about, you know, what if, uh, I don't know, like a monster came out and killed everyone? Like, stop. Um, what would Brian say? Hmm? What would Bri- oh, boyfriend. my boyfriend Brian Cox from yeah. Succession, what would he say? Mm-hmm. Fuck off! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I can't wait. Succession is coming back on, too. Soon. I keep seeing the ads. I don't really know when. Um, 
Yeah, my friend Mark Lynn Baker, who's really Lou's friend, but he's been my friend for 25 years now, too. I think it counts. Mark's in it, yeah. He was in, see, the last season. He's the guy at the cocktail party. He's the friend of the loser's son who's running for president. I don't remember what that guy's character's name is, but um, Mark Lynn Baker, who you may know from Perfect Strangers, that was, uh, but Mark has done many, many things other than that. But now he's in succession, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, he's a great yeah, I saw him in New York, and I was like, what is it? So fun. He said he loves it. He loves being a, a part of it. So very excited about that. Fight off. Uh, fight off. And uh, if you haven't seen Your Honor, I think I watched what was the last episode. They kept it open. There could be another season, but it pr- probably should end here anyway, yeah. and I'm so sad it's over. It was so good. So good. So good. Yep. Um, Brian Cranston. Everybody in it was great. Amazing. Yeah, and I think that's it. I think I'm out of stuff to watch after that. I did not watch the Academy Awards. I don't. Not I don't care. I like the Grammys because people perform. I think at the Oscars they should have to act out a scene of something or something. Do something instead of just congratulate yourself and other people. I, I find it boring. If anything, I would have um, recorded it and then I forgot. And I think basketball was on. Well, gambling's to be had. I can't gamble on the Oscars. Well, maybe you can. I didn't check on DraftKings. No, probably you can't do that. Because people already know who won it. We got a new candle. We got an Elvis candle. Yeah. King Elvis. Yep. The Elvi. That's from Dee Dee. Oh, from Dee Dee. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. All right, termites. So tell me what you wanted to say on the termite t-shirt. I'll totally make them. Yeah. I have new Nashville merch kids merch that children. are dynamite. Yeah. Dynamite. The merch children. We got stickers. We got stickers? Mm-hmm. They're fun? Yeah, those are just free. Yep. Um, all right. That's it. Are you ready? Yep.